That would mean you need five for a quorum. Oh, and I noticed the record button stuck. So again, calling the meeting to order in attendance is Henry, Goldfarb, uh, Herring, and Norman. All right, well, we did promise our speaker he's, he's very limited. We can't do any uh, official um, business, but I believe we can hear presentations from our speakers. So um, you need to have... do the non general comments, non agenda items. Yep. Yeah, so, so as we move towards that, are there any public comments on non agenda items? Item number two on our agenda? I think I see a student hand raised, and I see Rick there's, Watson. There's two. There's yeah. Two. Okay, so the first one I saw that went up, oh, just went down. Uh, Rick Watson. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, um, uh, letting me in this meeting. It's great to see you. Uh, I just wanted to extend an invitation from the Coastal San Pedro Sustainability Committee to participate in a community outreach uh, program next year. I'm just getting up plan setting up plans for 2023. And really, I just want to go take the pulse and do a listening tour around San Pedro and see what people are interested in, what what information they would that they could use to um, change, uh, you know, make make adjustments in their own residential or business uh, situation in San Pedro towards sustainability and um, and find out what uh, what priorities and concerns the community would like uh, the neighborhood council, at least coastal and northwest as well. If you're interested in collaborating on that, um, go find out what people are interested in and see what's what the, what the pulse is and the temperature is out there. Right, man, great to see you again, Rick. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to comment? Please uh, raise your hand. Um, okay, I see Rick's hands down, no other hands. All right, then it's my uh, pleasure to introduce um, Agi Bezma Linovich, uh, Port of Los Angeles. He's our community affairs advocate. I know he's got another meeting at seven, so I'll, I'll stop sharing in case you want to share, um, Agi, but uh, we'll put the focus on you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Hi, good, good evening, everyone. Actually, I'm, I'm going to be at the Central Neighborhood Council meeting, which starts at 6.30 and uh, we're presenting, but I think I'm uh, item number seven, so probably won't go down there till after seven, hopefully. Um, anyway, uh, I'd like to let you know that our Board of Harbor Commission meetings have gone live. So the last two meetings were live in the boardroom in our offices at 425 South Palos Verde Street on the second floor. And the next meetings, uh, there's going to be one this Thursday, November 17th at 1 p.m. So lot, most of our meetings start at 9 a.m., but this one's going to be at 1 p.m. this Thursday, followed by another meeting on Thursday, December 1st at 9 a.m. So all meetings are live now. Come on down and uh, join us if you feel feel like it. Um, give you a waterfront update. So on Saturday, West Harbor held their uh, groundbreaking uh, down at the site, their their new site, their new development site there at Ports Call. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, if you if you didn't attend, I know I saw a few of you down there, but uh, it's a picture perfect day um really really nice they had uh, a lot of their uh, vendors there uh, that are going to be in their new development uh, either uh, selling food or sharing yeah beer food all kinds of things like that it was it was a nice event uh so they received all their financing and they now hold the lease for that property so we should be seeing construction fences going up uh really soon and uh, they can't wait to get started. Uh, we got a lot of media attention on that uh, event too. It was all over the LA Times, uh, Daily Breeze, uh, Channel 5 that night, Channel 7, and other, other, uh, other news channels. Um, Alta C. So Alta C will be getting a new roof and uh, solar panels put on their roof here. Uh, that This wor we work is, will be starting very soon. Uh, Warehouse One. After two, three years of the pandemic, we are planning to go out with an RFI request for interest uh, for Warehouse One uh, in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, the Outer Cruise Terminal, a draft uh, RFP 
uh, is supposed to be out within the next 30 days. So uh, we're also getting back to uh, our, our outer cruise terminal and hopefully that someone will go out there and develop that site. Uh, the boat yard, the outer, uh, the outer uh, harbor there, uh, we're, we're still going through the environmental review process. We're still about 12, 14 months away before that process. Uh, uh, we'll have something uh, of substance with that process. And also the Carrillo Way Marina, we're still going through, through the environmental review process and so we're about a year away on that. Uh, a couple of events that'll be happening. Um, let me see. On, uh, I have Saturday, November 16th. That doesn't make sense, right? I don't think, I mean, Thursday, Thursdays, the 17th yeah i better stop that okay there's a there's a los angeles port police host uh coffee with a cop and i'm sorry about it. it's supposed to be in wilmington at the hall coffee house but uh i have conflicting conflicting uh, dates on that i'll have to relook that one up uh but our next uh, big event will be the holiday by the seas uh public event with a 5 p.m christmas tree lighting and um uh, uh, Happy Harbor Afloat Boat Parade. Uh, th that will be happening on uh, December 3rd. So the Holiday by the Sea, it's going to be around the Maritime Museum. And that event will be from 4 to 8. We're going to have a, a big Christmas tree in the middle of the uh, plaza area like we had last year. Uh, a larger tree this year. And also the Holiday Afloat Parade is going to be happening that same day. I think that starts around 6 o'clock. So the boats will be cruising by there uh, around six. And that's pretty much all I have, unless we have any questions for me. Oh, thank you. I do think there are questions. Uh, yes, please, Craig. Hi, Augie, how you doing? Good, good. Okay, um, I had questions about not what you said, but you know, there was all these projects under environmental review, but no, none of them got certified what is the process typically what happens is uh we'll get a well it starts off with a notice a nop a notice saying that you know we're planning on uh studying a project and there's typically a, a comment period for that and then uh we come out with a draft uh environmental document and the draft, we uh, publish that and we, we send it out to the community. Uh, usually it's a 30 to 60 day window that we're asking for comments back. Once we get those uh, comments back, we typically have a final environmental document that uh, also we go out and take uh, public comments uh, and that type of stuff. And then hopefully it'll go, well, it'll go in front of the Board of Harbor Commissioners and they'll either approve it or disprove it. If they approve it, then it goes to the city council and then they, they ratify it, I believe, is the, is the term. But that's well, the uh, reason I was asking is because yeah. we've gone through all that process and then it doesn't seem to be coming up to the harbor commissioners, like the Starkist can cannery, the terminal way chassis support, uh, a, a lot of projects like that, uh, the Vincent Thomas Bridge, the international gateway project all this stuff yeah what, how long does it take for the board of commissioners to review it well typically what happens is we you know it's a several process so a draft comes out and we get yeah, no but all that has gone through so you have the drafts you have everything the everything's closed when do they review it Okay, my, my item is next at the Central Neighborhood Council. Uh, when do they review it? I, I have to get a specific project, Craig, uh, in order to answer that. But typically, uh, the count, uh, let's say the terminal way chassis pro support facility. I, I have no idea offhand. I'd have to, you know, uh, look at that. But typically, a final uh, environmental document goes to the Board of Harbor Commissioners. So if you want to know about scheduling, I could find out, the, you know, which ones. Yeah, there, there's, you know, there, if on your site, there's one, two, three, four, maybe half a dozen, a dozen listed sure. on the, um, under environmental documents. Uh -huh. And 
I'm just wondering because we commented on all these, it's past the period, and it doesn't seem like when I check, you know, on the Harbor Commissioners, nothing seems to go. Some well, of the stuff disappears, but you know, I nothing well, typically seems to when have we gone get before the commission. We're in draft, it takes us a while to get the final out. And then, you know, I mean, we were probably, you know, depends on how many comments we get. We might have a bunch of comments. So depending on those comments, we have to go ahead and be able to answer all those comments and put those into the document. So that might take some time. Before, I mean, because I'm looking at this work. one, the terminal way chassis support facility, which closed on uh, 10, 15, 21, which is about a, over a year ago. Mm -hmm. I, I, Augie, I'm just curious because it just seems like all the stuff that had come up, we went through a lot of process and everything, and nothing seemed to go up to the Harbor Commissioner. So I'm curious, you know, I see, uh, you know, one up here that's still on there, the Yang Ming Container Terminal Redevelopment Project, and it's from 2014. Tom, I got to go. I got to go to the next meeting. Sorry. Okay. Well, see, see Augie. Um, yeah. you know, definitely like to have you or, or Chris maybe uh, back in December. So I'll work that through you. And Augie, oh, he left. Did he leave already? Oh, I just wanted to ask him to give us the documents that he just went through. I'll just, I'll send an email. Oh, oh the documents you were looking at on the screen? Yeah. And, um, anyway, uh, can I respond to Craig real quick? Sure. Uh, Craig, so so you know uh, maybe Augie, you know he's he's a liaison, but uh, we were going to touch base with uh, Christopher Cannon about some of that as well. So so perhaps your questions uh, maybe send it to Thomas and uh, yeah. If you think that's what it is. <laughs> well, you know he, he'll 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 have. I mean, I, I I I'm I'm pretty sure Chris has a better idea, but I think. <laughs> You know, we commented on all these projects over the years and, you know, it's sitting before the Board of Harbor Commission. It's supposed to go before the Harbor Commissioners and basically. They're, they're sitting in status. Yeah. 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 And I'm my assumption had always been when they were going to wait for the new. Uh, uh, this the new C councilman to they're waiting on the new councilman to come in and the new uh thing because it uh the new and to reappoint the commission uh but i'm not sure i mean it's just extremely bizarre you know that there's still things on there from 2014 and um all these things we commented philip 66 Bopac, uh, the low recycling. carbon uh, cement processing facility. Recycling, yeah. Uh, yeah, SA recycling. All these projects we commented on, we've said stuff, we've been watching, and nothing's happening. I mean, it's not moving. If, I, it, if it was like, you know, a few months, but this is like a year, year and a half. I mean, uh, I, I it's I'm curious why they're not moving forward. I, I think it's a great question. I've only been on this committee for a while, and yeah, you would like to think that something happens to the work we do, and it matters. So it's a great question. Um, you know, I did ask Augie um, based on my notes from our last meeting to attend. I've also asked for Chris Cannon. There's a protocol, I guess, because Chris said he was going to come, and then. Augie emailed me saying I have to work through him. So I feel there, there's a willingness and Chris Cannon's less constrained by other the other meetings. So that will be my request for our next meeting that they can give us more time because I thought we had him until seven. It's not very close to seven um, on my clock. So I, I apologize that, that, but at least we got one question in it. And thank you, Craig. Sorry when you didn't get yours asked. Um, you know, we, we didn't have any pending actions uh, from the last meeting, so I'll, I'll move on and uh, now just invite comments and uh, suggestions from stakeholders and committee members. If you know, some of us were doing some research, so if anybody 
wants to be recognized to update on what's happened between October and today. Uh, Gwen, you can go first. Uh, well, well, in regards to our discussion, uh, Craig and I were going to work on a couple of letters. And Craig, I kind of put a, a hold on that. Uh, the one that I was going to work on was the uh, traffic corridors. A lot has happened in between um, the last time I was visiting it and, and now. For example, uh, sometime about June, there was a big truck fire in Wilmington. And uh, Joe Buscaino, our council member, uh, because there, this has been an ongoing issue and we had a, if anybody wants to look at the recording, we, we had a, a long discussion about how the trucking corridors, Wilmington is highly impacted, uh, Harbor City, um, Carson as well, which is a, a totally separate city from Los Angeles, are highly impacted by the, the, uh, the trucks that come through and they, they sit there, they idle, they park in communities, and it's been an ongoing issue. But um, during the pandemic, uh, with all the cargo containers piling up, the trucks were really coming in and then there was a truck fire. So, so Joe, Joe Buscaino uh, created an emergency ordinance, which uh, was keeping all trucks out, all of them out for, for at least 45 days. Anyway, uh, those 45 days went through and that was to, you know, they voted for that until, until uh, the ordinance was looked at again. They did vote on that ordinance in August. So it's actually no trucks and everything, an emergency ordinance for the next 10 months and five, like some odd days. But uh, that's in, in action right now. And uh, Carson, interestingly enough, has just in October uh, started to look at um, uh, create just total zoning re uh, redo regarding trucks and where they can be allowed. They're like 500 feet, 500 miles away from residences. They're they're going through everything. So um, that. If, if the, the surrounding cities uh, start really getting very heavy on, on trucks and, and trying to keep them out of their neighborhoods, their communities, their industrial areas, then the impact is going to be uh, seen in places like Los Angeles, which if they don't do something about the zoning, that's where everybody will go. So um, the last time, uh, we discussed things that there were ideas bandied about, but I'm going to be uh, visiting with uh, the Wilmington Neighborhood Council, some of the representatives there, uh, hopefully talk with Chris Cannon and some of the members of the port, maybe go to this commission meeting as well that was just announced uh, in and, and ask what the status is for that kind of thing. But um, I actually looked at the federal Department of Transportation regarding um, what they want to see for development around ports and trucking uh, corridors. And they have a whole section which says it's very important to uh, look at properties and assess properties around ports. And in those, those corridors, try to come up with uh, private partners, uh, commercial partners, who can come up with uh, rest areas and and um, develop places where truckers can be safely housed, where they can idle, and there's you know the the they can actually plug in instead of idling, those kind of things. So so there's there's a lot of things that we can speak about. Um, the, the emergency ordinance, there were actually about three or four ordinances that, that came out of that, and I've got to look at them carefully, but, um, and Craig, there might be some towards your aspect about lights and noise and everything, but, um, uh, so there's a lot of things coming up, and it'd probably be best to discuss things with the port before. So, so, so you're, you're working, but you've done a lot of work. Uh, yeah. You get that uh, when. Right. Fantastic. Thank you. And anybody else want to update Craig? Thank you. Sorry, I, I, you know, I've been, I haven't been able to find a lot on the light pollution with ports, but I did find a lot on 
an overwhelming amount on sound pollution, especially in Europe. And one of the things that I found really interesting was they were talking about how you place the containers. So if you look behind me, <laughs> that's a view from my house. Um, the containers are placed long ways facing out from the port. And what they were talking about was placing them the other way so it blocks sound. You know, and I was saying to myself, this is an easy one. We can mm. grab this and run with it. So, um, but they also did like, I was looking like in Barcelona, they did studies about sound corridors around the port. And I, th I think there's a lot there. Um, and if anybody has any ideas about the light pollution section, um, I, please send them to me because I'm not finding a lot of data on it, but we know it's a, an issue. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Thank you for the research on that. Um, I'll, I'll throw into um, one of the databases at the University of Light Pollution, see if something comes up. Uh, Gwen. Yeah, Craig, uh, um, I kind of studied, uh, actually, Arizona, the, their university uh, works very hard on that kind of study on urban uh, light pollution. So um, I'll try to dig things out over there as well. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, Jason, yeah, great. I was hoping to raise your hand. Jason. Oh, you're muted though, Jason. Or your microphone's not working. Here we go, that's better. Anyways. Um, yeah, so a friend of mine works in uh, astronomy, and those guys really know about light pollution. I will see what resources he has, and he can steer me towards on that. Satellite, satellite. Uh... Well, just light pollution. Uh, yeah. They, they look for dark sky spots, too. Oh, actually. Like telescopes, and they do lots of light pollution studies, so. Craig, I actually, I actually did see something regarding satellite imagery and light pollution. Um, I'll try to figure, find that. Yeah, I saw it within the last week. Let me, let me find that out. A lot, of, a lot of stuff with satellites. So, so. A, a lot of what I'm looking for is um, more of like, you know, when you, because Health. we know light pollution and we know we can see it from on top. But what I'm what I'm looking for, and I think what is practical solutions to to solve it, do they have like covers that go over the lights? Can is it possible that they can do when I, I work in these manufacturing plants and if there's movements, the light goes on. If nothing's moving, the lights are off. Can they do that in the port? It's it's more about, uh, I mean, because I know, we know we can see it. I, I can see it from my house. Um, the, the, the thing is, is how, what are the mitigating, how do we mitigate it? So we can make suggestions on it. Yeah. No, I, I think that's key. I mean, as I did a quick, search i see there's all kinds of things in the bad we know it's bad we know turtles don't like it or i see a bunch of things on turtles but, but i only see one on maybe mitigation um uh port port influence so so we'll, we'll take that under advisement and, and work on that outside the meeting but thank you for at least starting on that uh craig and for everyone's input anybody from the public want to Suggest area, um, and, and we are going to go to uh, Central and Coastal. Rick, so that's great. You've got your hand raised, please, Rick. Sure, just want to uh, throw in one more piece of information on the light pollution question. There's been some recent studies published around the impact of light pollution on migratory birds. Uh, it's dramatic and extensive, and I think that would be significant for a coastal estuary area such as the port. 
that actually was commentary uh, regarding the fireworks and the uh, the the uh, new new uh, music amphitheater. Um, that was part of that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right. Uh, we we had no action items, so I'll move on to that. Or I guess no. I guess sorry, I moved on from that. Uh, number six. Uh, seeing we have someone here, um, Rick, do you want to provide an, an update on the joint meeting? Uh, sure. Um, let me just pull up my notes real quick. Uh, da, 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 didn't know I was on the agenda. <laughs> well, I, I, I was there for most of it, but I think you were there for the whole meeting, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I think... Uh, and, and there weren't any burning action items, you know, my recollection, but... No, we we uh, no, not particularly. Uh, I think like I like I announced earlier, we're going to have um, the next meeting in December. We're going to basically do a recap of uh, I do a year in review, and uh, and that'll set the stage for planning for 2023, and really um, put the focus on the local community and what what people are residents and, and local businesses are willing and able to do. Um, and we discussed probably the only real um, item of business was the LA Wild City LA Wildlife Ordinance, uh, which uh, Coastal had issued a positive a CIS in support of the previous version, and so we're going to discuss at our next board meeting whether or not it warrants if if enough changes were made in the current version that's going to planning commission this week I believe, um, what and what planning commission does with it. <laughs> And uh, whether or not it'll warrant um, changing our level of support or or updating our CIS in some regard. So that's just working work in the pipeline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gwen. Well, with that, uh, I suggest that should be a point of topic on the next agenda, hopefully. Yeah, we can add that. Anyone else want to be recognized on that? If not, we'll move on to the, oh. Oh, go ahead, Gwen. Uh, there's one more topic that I, I hope to have on there. Um, with all of the uh, improvements around the port, um, uh, something that I think should also be considered is uh, an funding uh, on the, Completing the corridor of the uh, Los Angeles River and the Dominguez Channel, uh, bringing it down to the harbor. There, uh, we had already sounded off and, uh, and approved, um, uh, supported the uh, the state funding bill, but um, I think that we should uh, reach out even further because uh, once again, steelhead trout actually come poking up into the port looking for an inlet for spawning. And with the 2028 uh, Olympics coming up um, I, and the, the push of Los Angeles wanting to appear as a very green city and, and uh, take a leadership in the United States for, for um, uh, being a top biodiverse um, city, you know, that whole thing. Um, I think we should make a big push for that, for, for actually naturalizing and trying to uh, support wetlands and that get that the river completed again, get it, you know, that, so, so, so just so we've got the action items clear and mm -hmm. know how to agendize those. One, if we get something from the Joint Commission on the Wildlife Corridor, we can, you know, vote to agree, you know, disagree. Um, and are you proposing you'll you'll write some language, Gwen, on on uh, requesting funding or re renewing our request? Just want to get, you know, what what is the action we'll take? Uh. Well, I don't know which organizations to go towards, whether it's the Port of Los Angeles for uh, some of their some of the improvements in West Harbor, um, or if it's uh, if it's with uh, the uh, Rivers Conservancy. Um, okay, so we'll maybe research that one, but that one yeah, probably won't be yeah. ready for but, action. Yeah, but 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 some kind of action on um, 
trying to get that funding for, for our area. Okay, great. All right, and I'll move into um, what came out of the uh, president's uh, chamber presence, Northwest presence. Uh, our president wasn't able to attend, but I attended. I've sent to the uh, to the group here, and if members of the public want it, they uh, should be coming into the the Dropbox um, to accompany this agenda. They've been sent, so you should see them probably tomorrow. Um, one of the items discussed was what's happening on North Gaff, Gaffey Street. I won't redo the presentation, just kind of quickly uh, let you see some of the highlights. This is the area we're talking about. So phase one is done. What they call phase two at Gadden and Gaffey Street is underway. Um, you're gonna have some very nice- Can you back that up? Oh, sure, sure, Craig. This one? The one before that. Okay. Yeah, what is that area again? Can you just- uh... Uh, well, Gadden Street and Gaffey Street. If you, I didn't know where Gadden was to be honest. I know Gaffey, but uh, Gadden. So there, I guess there's going to be a Caltrans Park and Ride lot, and they're just trying to beautify this area. That this area, I guess, looks a lot less nice than what they did in Phase One. Okay, I got it. That's on North the left North. is filled with dreams. Ah, uh, yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm. It's it, it's a confusing picture. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I was. Looking at it, so okay. The wow, Greg, is that is that the the rail where the uh, where the butane tanks uh, are taken from Rancho LPG area? I mean, I'm calling it Rancho LPG, whatever it's called now. I think I'm I'm being a little. I think the that would be to the left of the field of dreams. So. I think it goes under think, that tunnel there. So in the middle would be, looks like the, um, what do you call it? The sanitation yard. So yeah. you're all yeah, that the stuff community around. Garden. Yeah, yeah, the community gardens. So when they're I can talking- can attest that there are butane tanker trucks rolling by that on a regular basis on that yeah. rail. Yeah. yeah, Rick, yeah. Well, let's have a discussion about you, that. Uh, butane and, and propane um but the the center thing so where the skate park is, is where they're talking about the the parking where you're talking about the parking mm -hmm. okay so i i'm just trying to get oriented on so they're they're basically working on the area that goes underneath the freeway and coming across yeah and then there's the three things they're doing, right? So you can see that the line goes to the three areas. We want to see what they look like visually from the side versus from the top. Yeah, it's 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 conf okay. And then the train tracks. Well, and I think the bigger comp the bigger point here is this is really a connector project, right? They're doing Front Street from the skate park all the way down to the Catalina Terminal. And the new fountain and all that other good stuff they put in at the waterfront. Are, so this are they showing that on here? Well, no, it's a separate project yeah, actually. That's, that, that's um, separate. But is it, it is that is something that they've talked about. So they basically you'll be able to walk from you know the new clamshell out at the end of the development project from the concert hall all the way to Home Depot on mm -hmm. this nice little greenway. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I was wondering about bicycles. Is there, is there I mean that I'm not, I'm the same thing. I mean because uh, bicycling down that same route is horrible. Uh, Let me see if I can see this. You know, here's the pedestrian path. So I guess you could probably ride your bicycle on that. Well, no, they, that's usually frowned upon. It needs to be a separate thing. Uh, no, 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 the, what, I, what I want to look at is, yeah, no, I know I don't like when banks do that, but that's why I said I guess. I don't think you, you're supposed to. Um, six feet wide, but, you know, so I didn't remember seeing any bike lane in the proposals, but nobody asked about it. Um, you know, for, for people watching, too, I wanted, you know, students to know and in the public to know, it's like, you know, 3.5 million is going into this beautification, some serious money from China shipping, and then Caltrans, you know, for the project related to them. So I just thought it was and they're going to use drought resistant, you know, nice little plants here. But I thought this was worth sharing because at least you see where some of the port dollars are going. And as we think of making requests for things to benefit our area, 
Um, this, this is a good example of what, what is going on and people kind of asked for, who knows, 10 years ago, five years ago, how long these, based on what we've heard today, it might be more than 10 years to get these things going. Well, well, we've more, got... definitely more than 10 years. But... So, <laughs> the skate park's been like, what, eight years? Yeah. Well, it, it's full on. Uh, there, there were a bunch of kids having a great time over there this weekend. Uh, some friends of mine uh, documented a whole bunch of fun stuff going on over there. So, so um, here's where I was so surprised you're saying it took so long because sitting in this presentation saying they completed the design in you know, September, and it's going to be done February 2024. That doesn't seem like a long time to me as a citizen. That actually seems good. It seems odd that it takes five times longer to plan it than it does to actually build it. But maybe they don't keep to these. I don't know. I mean, no, they. I mean, they had these plans before. So this was supposed when they built the the section out here on Gaffey across from Target. They were supposed to do all that and then all this other stuff got done i mean the china sh you know the majority of the china shipping money did not go it, you know it was supposed to be to mitigate the effects of china shipping mm -hmm. that money didn't go here mm -hmm. you know a lot of it went to uh hey rookie pool mm -hmm. which <laughs> i don't know how that mitigates anything but, but nice well you know, they, they apply the stuff over to other things. And then we have this little project. And now um, I wonder if we can comment and ask about right, uh, bike gray, bike. No, no. I, if, I, if somebody, if I would have thought of that, I think that's great. I will, will ask, um, is there any ability to add a bike path or is there one I just don't see in this? Okay. Well, we'll with that, um, well, for example, uh, with the with the rail system, the metro rail system that went through uh, from downtown all the way to to uh, the Santa Monica Pier, there's an amazing independent bike path that also connects all the way to LAX. But there is it's it's a its own unique place. It's separate from traffic. It's a, separate from pedestrians and it's it's actually they they found other areas other than along the rail uh the rail itself to continue and connect it and it's beautiful and well you know wilmington is, hosts uh what's it cyclovia you know the the annual different areas where you can bicycle on the streets and have your lights and everything like that um but there doesn't seem to be um, any p bike uh, pathway being created that that can continue and connect the rest of the coastline and the port of Los Angeles and West Harbor. I, I think that that would be a really great thing to like sell it like that. Well, they're they're there. The problem is they're in such poor condition. Um, you know, I, right down there where. Uh, just the other side of the freeway, I was crossing the railroad tracks and went down, and broke my wrist. Oh yeah, yeah. And it it's just that, you know, uh, between the railroad tracks, the the they don't take care of the side of the road. If you look, there's a bike path all the way down Gaffey, going uh, wow. right in front of that park. Um, and they've been tearing up Gaffey. We were talking about, you know, the the sanitation. They're doing the outflow and they're going through there. And I was asking them about where they were cutting. Every time they cut, they fill it, and all that is going into the bike paths. Mm -hmm. So you have to ride over all this stuff, and it's like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if if this is a you know, one of the things we need to be asking is when they're doing this stuff, what about servicing those bike paths? And with that, um, the, the danger, um, another stakeholder uh, quite a few years ago, some, someone we know, um, yeah, that, that same problem. Uh, he was heavily injured because of, of the condition of the bike path. So, um, you know what's what's the ordinance zero 
the one where you don't want to kill anybody anymore in traffic and pedestrians and things like that. It's called Zero Vision or something like that. Maybe oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's something yeah, reducing that. Zero. I, we could even throw that in as a as a comment saying you want Vision Zero, then then use some of the use some of the str strategies to separate bike lanes from traffic like they're doing in Mar Vista, in Santa Monica, in Los Angeles, all along the metro. We would like this, please. Thank you. Okay, well, well good feedback. Um, there, there were three things I, I um, had Chris email me this one because I thought it was fascinating and something we've talked a lot about. So it, if you're wondering why it's dated, it takes a year <laughs> to tell you. Um, you know, the presentation was just dated October 6, 2022. Here's the report in 2021, air emissions, which is of great interest to our committee. Um, and so, you know, the different pollutants they're looking at, greenhouse gases versus ones that are more harmful, you know, source, big surprise, ships, harbor craft, the cargo, handling equipment, trucks and locomotives are the source of the pollution. And they work with the EPA and our California Air Refor Resources Board and uh, uh, South Coast AQMD. Um, so yes, there was a pandemic, unprecedented consumer demand. We all saw the backlogs. We looked out um, our windows and saw the port was full. And uh, container acreages, you want to look at pre-disruption, how many there were versus post. Uh, obviously a huge increase. We probably heard presentations elsewhere about the new queuing system. Once they realized that you know the impact, they started having ships stay further offshore and uh, get get a spot. And so one of the things they wanted to see was that working, um, and it and it was. Uh, as we look a year later, it turns turns out that South Coast AQMD modeling uh, did say it um, show that it was affecting quality. What's <clears throat> maybe most interesting is if you look at the picture to the right you'll see the zone where the ships were asked to stay. I mean, it was far enough out that the pollution wasn't reaching us. There was a 150 mile and a 50 mile barrier. And if Jace or somebody, you know, knows this better than I do, you know, my, I ain't going into that much detail there, but it, it did appear to be working. When you've got your hand up. It's for, it's for another topic after you're completed. Okay. But uh, it would be great to have this graphic uh, posted in our, in, in our um, online. Yeah, I sent sent them to Christina to, to go in the folder with our agenda. Uh, so I'm a little surprised they're not there today. But uh, and then I because they weren't, I emailed them to to each of you if you want to look at them in greater detail. So you, you should have three PDFs from me. Um, okay, and then here's the the NOx emissions. So you'll see those were really really quite high September October, and you know the source of where they're coming from. So the anchorage really uh, did matter. Uh, the orange, the biggest one, was Anchorage, and then uh, birth and the transit. Okay, so that was uh, you know, monthly. And then if you want to look over time, the, the annual definitely. Um, wow, look at that jump because of the pandemic. Right. 2020 and, to 2021. And I recall asking each of the meetings I went to why we couldn't get this sooner, right? I'd rather know when I'm breathing it that when I'm breathing, but they, they, and a lot of reasons they couldn't provide it till now. Um, okay, so ship type, I don't know if that's as interesting. If you really want the detail um, there, what about the uh, sulfur oxide, the, the SOX? You can see that that also uh, got very high in uh, 2005s and then spiked up. So compared to, I guess, the way it used to be, um, not so bad, but, but it did increase. Mm -hmm. um, and then I forget what DPM is. Who knows what DPM is? Oh, something particulate matter. Um, I'm not sure what type of particulate matter it is, but there, there was that one. Uh, oh, diesel particulate matter. Okay, there it is. Um, so good news, the diesel was way down. They've been trying to run, you know, cleaner equipment, but uh, bad news, nitrous oxide was, did not meet their goal. The sulfur oxide, they're meeting their 2023 goal. Greenhouse gases, though, were up, uh, but, you know, so, so is the amount of shipping. That's what TEU stands for. So uh, I don't know. That's a lot of stuff there. Um, so and if people want it, they, they have this available online too. So somebody in the public that really wants to get these right away, take note of that website, Port of LA. It's emissions dash inventory after the fact slash whatever that means. Any questions on this one before I move to the next one? 
Um, yeah, go ahead, Greg. I, I wanted to point out, you know, you know, there, there's, um, when you you start looking at this stuff, you know, they they tend to show us this long thing, and then you see this huge decrease, and then we're down here. And then you see, oh, it's flatlined, where they're not making any improvement on it. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, it went up because of other stuff, but there, you know, and that's where we need to be pushing. Okay, you're gonna say, oh, we made improvements, but look how how far it dropped off between 20, 25, 2005 and 2010. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then it's just incremental down there to 220, went up because of what happened with the pandemic. And so they basically, and you, and that the big side on that, you know, um, you know, like on, on Knox emissions is they, they picked off the low hanging fruit. So now they're stuck with, the other stuff and you know this is a um they they basically with the nox missions i'm pretty sure it had a lot to do with the plugins at the port and with making them run cleaner fuel when they come closer to the coastline the the problem is okay we're still suffering mm -hmm. well so what i mean i <laughs> In the industry I deal with, we deal with it with the Knox all the time, and you can really impact it. But um, I'm wondering how far they're willing to go after it. What? Well, a couple of things. Uh, the the this air quality. Um, there's no. I mean, I'm just saying uh, clearly the port is is uh, a great impact but uh there is other industry there's oil refining and everything else around so so um some of that that leveling off we have a lot of other industries that are highly polluting that also uh have an impact so there's that um i'll i'll try to uh, speak with um uh andrea Hricko and edward aval from uh Keck University regarding some of this. Um, they they're all over the uh, the air quality and where where the sources are and that kind of thing. But um, uh, with this also, Craig, uh, this is the month where the Port of Los Angeles and the Ports of Shanghai were supposed to come up and announce to the announce to the rest of the ports uh, about about the big plan to go zero emission shipping from, from the beginning to the end. I wanted to find out about that. Um, I wanted to find out what the results were. And uh, maybe maybe this commissioner's meeting might have some of that information, but uh, I thought that was supposed to happen this week or is it next week, the 18th of November? But that's a huge, huge, huge thing. And uh, we'll, we'll be lucky that the Port of Los Angeles is uh, going to be the uh, test trial, the experiment in coming up with zero emission shipping, including trucks and the uh, corporate, um, the manufacturers and um, the trains, the, the, whole, the whole works. So I would, I'm very anxious to see what plan they came up with as the testing ground for zero emission shipping globally for the future so anyway hopefully that that will impact that level that is still impacting the port okay i don't know does anybody know what the date is of that um garcetti i can find stuff from garcetti and soroka but i, I don't see this anything this week so yeah, if somebody finds out, I, I would like to know that too. Yeah, it was in China. It's a, I think that the meeting is in China. Okay. Um, I'll move on because uh, I was excited saying we talked about bikes, right? The connectivity plan actually had a really nice bike lane here in their picture. 
Um, so this is the waterfront connectivity plan. It's supposed to uh, have some great things. So bicycle and pedestrian planning, public art planning, open space planning. Um, you know, one of the elements, uh, motorized and non motorized and weight uh, binding was supposed to have a five year short term plan and beyond five year. And they basically were announcing who the people are, they're going to get paid to look into this. So, uh, Cambridge Systematics, Ulta, here LA, Anchor TEA, HRNA. I don't know if anyone in this group is familiar with those groups. And then the scope area, kind of what you were talking about before, Lima looks like it's just going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, Cabrillo Pier, you know, making its way up to the Harbor Freeway. Um, and so what's been done already? Uh, set the framework, think about it comprehensively. So there should be public um, opportunities coming up over the next five years to be involved in a dynamic planning document. This could be fun for some of the students. There's, there's STEM aspects and um, public and uh, you know social aspects to it. Uh, so winter 2022, summer 2023, um, two meetings, community meeting uh, occurring very soon. It'd be nice to have the actual date but the community meetings coming up and then it'll go kind of to Craig's um, a question and Harbor Commission meetings to uh, review in, in two meetings later next year. Um, and that was just kind of, to me, this was a, we're engaging a bunch of people. We're gonna you know, invite the public to comment and they would encourage everyone to get really involved in the exciting plan. So maybe there will be that ability for feedback to say, hey, let's put a bike lane in here, right? You've got a bike lane in this presentation. We don't see it on this project you're doing here. So let's let's add that. Any questions or comments on that? But there, there was actually a lot. It was a pretty pretty long meeting. And that's pretty interesting. And I got everybody to send me, well, not everybody, but I got three of the four people to send me their slides to share with you. Uh, can I, you know, if Ray isn't going to show up to the meeting, can I have you know, uh, could you ask him to give me the things so I could show up to the meeting or one of the other people from the from our committee? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, uh, what, what I'll do is, yeah, I'll, I'll copy you on that. Or I'm right, and Gwen. Well, maybe, yeah, I, I, I just I, ask for somebody else from the committee, and then we can work out who goes. And, and I can take a break from going. Yeah, but, I was I was invited to that uh, prior. Um, when there was no port committee, I, I, I was invited to participate in those. Now, let, me, let me make sure I get that in my notes, Craig. Um, okay, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I had been going when I was head of the committee and I'm, it's, I, you find out some curious information and like this stuff. And I think we, we have equal questions on this. Um, what are they gonna do? You know, I, I always love how they show this graphic of, you know, the bike and the bike path, and then there's no information to follow up on it. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 with that, uh, the uh, the West Harbor development, if you recall, the first one that uh, very beautiful graphics. What what the white tents or the white nondescript. Uh, buildings that that went through three different reincarnations when one, one was quite fanciful with with uh like clock towers and and fanciful uh wharf like things and lots of glass and color and everything and then it went to some kind of black building modern uh nondescript thing and then they went to white buildings and with each with each change massive design change to the whole thing and it was everything buildings uh walkways everything uh nobody ever got any input in it but it literally went through three different architectural <laughs> design changes <laughs> that made them completely different three times and you're right about the about the bike lane yeah you know, that that could not even exist in the final plan for who knows? Well, um, a little bit of time check because we're at um, seven twenty-seven. I'm not saying we, we've got to end, but just well, uh, to acknowledge that. And, and I just wanted to share: it's a Zoom meeting, so I don't know why more people couldn't be on it. I seem to remember I might even brought up that idea, Craig, and they're like, "Oh, it can't be too many people." But you know, but but I will make a formal request on email on behalf of the committee and in copy the committee members um, on the request, so our president can respond. Um, cause I, I do think the more people that are there, you know, as a, as a 
person who hasn't lived here as long or been the committee, um, I do think it's a great opportunity to ask questions. And um, I did make a request for well, later on the agenda, right? I've asked for the right person to come talk to us about the PAP, the funding. That's really what I wanted to argue. That was my priority. And then I got, you know, I can only come for a little while and, and he didn't want to discuss that yet. But I, I'm pushing to get that on, on this agenda. Or if we have to do a special meeting, if our time's not right, you know, to have us consider maybe a special meeting, which would probably be early next year, because uh, that that's that's one of the areas I really want to see something happen, um, you know, on and have us be better informed to advocate for Northwest San Pedro. Well, well, with that, um, I'm glad you're doing that because there are, are actually different ideas for the cultural and artistic part of um, the port enhancements that uh, and funding them that got some good ideas. Mm -hmm. no, um, and, and that could be a, a good session for public for you know some of the student members. I you know I, yeah. I think there's a lot of a lot of they want community input. I'd love to give them some good community input. Um, all right. So uh, I don't think I didn't receive any updates on legislation or, or you know meetings when you kind of gave your Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Jason. Before you launch that, so regarding the connectivity plan, were we not supposed to be working somewhat in conjunction with them on this? We're supposed to have some delegates that were supposed to be uh, from the different neighborhood councils that you know, working with consultants on this? Um, they didn't talk about that. That was mm -hmm. that was originally supposed to be when it was first discussed this connectivity plan, like I don't know, a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was. Um, it was discussed that we would have you know, uh, input directly mm -hmm. into it. So we, some of these things, such as with the West Harbor, we didn't have any input until it was done. Here's the final plan. And a bunch of us said, uh, we don't like that. We don't like that. Like, and they were actually a little bit hostile about it. They're yeah. like, too bad. We don't, we don't like the name. Too bad. We don't like this. Too bad. I mean, they were just really um, very brief with us. So uh, our, our input was not appreciated. So I just don't want to see the same thing happen with the connectivity plan and i think we were supposed to get a couple of delegates per neighborhood council to work with them to get our concerns addressed oh th thank you for bringing that up and, and my comment wasn't when i said i didn't hear it i didn't hear it in the presentation um but i'm really glad uh to know that 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 spirit sounds familiar i think i've heard that with other projects it's like oh yes neighborhood councils will be involved and then stuff just happens they're not and um, that's not the only time. And I've seen it with buildings on my campus too. And then, you know, they make big mistakes. Like we built a dining hall mm -hmm. and they forgot to put the food in, you know, the food in the dining hall. So they have to add, have an add on building. I mean, there, there is a good reason for public input at the right time because it, it's often, you know, not economically viable to fix it once they, they've gotten that far. So I, I just think having two open community input meetings is, is not how you're going to get good input into this, right? No, no, but but that is the appearance that they've done that. And Rick, if you're you're listening, or anyone else, um, Craig, yeah. any 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 um, recollection of that, or I, I want to try to get a, a good answer to that. And if there's more, who remember well, when this was well, said? Jason, Jason, so so there was no. I don't remember anything. This was this was discussed in planning and land use. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, I'm right. not on that one. Okay. I, that's what I was about to ask. Yeah. Uh, Input can mean update us after the fact after they already decided what they're going to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's okay. Terrible. Um, okay, well, yeah, and Jason, that that seeing you are on that committee too. If you want, if you can bring that up, I think they canceled the last meeting, but um, yeah, I de definitely like to. You know, we we work together as a whole council too, so there's a couple of committees interested in that. Thank you. Because yeah, there's, I'm, there's I'm sure Pat, Pat probably knows about it, but he's not here tonight. There's cultural aspects uh, that that I think that um, uh, they should have input on. Yeah. Anyway, um, before before we go, I want to get another count of the students. But um, okay, yep. Go ahead and do the, the count. And I'm not saying going. I just didn't think we had anything on legislation. Now this is your big moment, uh, Gwen, because I'm counting on you for the update on the Spring Emergency Prep Wild Fast yeah. Eco Fest. Yeah, yeah, okay, so so we really need to come out with a date. Forget that April date right there, uh, it's looking at May. Um, uh, Melanie from Public Safety uh, and I are going to be coordinating with uh, Peck Park. It looks like they're very hope 
that they're they're very interested in it. But it this would be a really really large event, and um, we're looking to I I'm I'm really going to try to have electric vehicles, electric bikes there for you know testing and looking at um, the public safety aspect is one that that was supposed to happen that was a requirement back before the pandemic and then everything got shut down so we've got we've got everything you know uh, that that we want to do with this and and peck park wanting to um bring people back to the park uh have a lot of activities get volunteers docents uh get get people to help replant the park and, and put native plants back in. All of these things are, are uh, we've got light goals. So um, it's about coming up with a date in May that, that at least students can come to, that vacations aren't being taken, there's no graduations or anything going on and um, come up with a date because april uh seems to be incredibly busy because there's spring break and the rest of that and everybody and their mother has a an earth day event so um well yeah. uh, but um and this would be great for the public you know students to, to comment before we we're uh, you know we did have a, a student um suggest may wasn't good because it's close to graduation so maybe a late april or early may but if the, is there anybody in the public who'd like to raise her or his hand um, in terms of uh, time you would want to participate, is there a, a, a week in April, uh, a week in May, to to give the one of the chairs of this committee some feedback? I'm going to wait a little bit to give you time to raise your hand if you're thinking um, this can be, you know, quite a nice event. Pack Park's nice that time of year. Well, that's any, cool. Any, well, any, any other board members? And you know, my my sense. Kind of knowing students is, is like late April. You know, I, I don't think people have spring break there, but you know, I, I leave it to you there. I just I do um, like that you're working with public safety. You know, given the shootings and you know outreach, I'm on that committee, so it can work to to help organize that in that role as well. And, and oh, hi Augie, he's got an idea. Oh, hey, hey Augie, and Ben wanted to comment. Okay, well, let's do Augie and then Ben. I'm back. I'm sorry. You're welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry I had to leave, but uh, Central called. We, okay. It'd be nice maybe maybe not have this meeting the same night as a Central Neighborhood Council meeting. But <laughs> uh, well, we well, can agendize uh, yeah, if we want to change the, the time and date again. I know we, we did have a resignation today. Um, so I'll take that under advisement, Augie. Oh, and Augie, uh, some of the things that you had uh, provided visually, would you please uh, forward so we can have it um, posted in our oh, area? Oh, I, I was doing that, Gwen. I wanted to, to interject. I was just showing the website because I went to the event. So what, what you were seeing when he was speaking was just my excitement huh. of the wonderful event he had. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll send you that link if it wasn't a slide deck. Yeah, but like coffee with a cop and the rest of that, the ho holiday by the sea, those kind of things. Um, um, All right. So, so uh, okay. Any um, Ben Norman? Let's let's call on Ben. Uh, I was just gonna say, late April for the event would be good because like there's Easter beforehand and graduation after, so like around that time would be good for the event. Late April, meaning like. The last two weeks, maybe. So, so that's sandwiched between graduation and Easter, yeah. like yeah, that area. Yikes! Or, or, yeah, or the first week of May. I mean, the graduation sometimes you know start really early in May. Spring break is often last week of spring. You know, first week of, of April. Right. Right. And I don't know when Earth Day is if you're trying to avoid Earth Day, but just just thing to consider. We've got a lot of time, but but the quicker you have a date, the quicker we'll be able to help and get get people signed up to work on that. Okay. Um, Anyone else want to talk about that, or you know, um, Augie, what we're trying to figure out is for our big big event. I don't know if you know of any port activities or LA activities. Is there a weekend in the end of April or May we should stay away from? Check our website, lawaterfront.org. We have a calendar 
on that website. And we typically have some community events um, listed also. Now, and also the Business Improvement District, the PBID, they used to maintain a calendar. I haven't seen it uh, lately. I haven't gone on there and seen it, but they mm -hmm. used to also maintain a calendar. So you might want to double check with that. And then finally, I would always double check with the lease at the chamber because yeah. she's pretty savvy with uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you never want to compete with Fleet Week. And, you know, certain weeks you just. Right, right. <laughs> This, but this, yeah, our, our that calendar. was the website I was showing. I think when he was on, right, and it had had uh, the dates here. So holidays by the sea coming up and winter wonderland. Well, Augie, Augie, with that, um, uh, what we were discussing, and you kind of jumped in. You might not have heard. Uh, we're looking at a very large wild fest again over at Peck Park sometime in the spring. We didn't want to compete with um, with all of the Earth Day events. Uh, or anything and uh, a lot of people were saying uh, sometime in early May but uh, now we're hearing also that may already be running into graduations so if you have any thoughts um, yeah <laughs> that's pretty far in the future uh, let's see you know it looks like cars and stripes that's not July based on last week Okay. There's an actual here. then there's an actual calendar too. I think on the bottom of that page you could click on a, a calendar and you could see uh, things filled out um, uh, each day. Yeah, that, that's what you meant. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty good. Um, and we could, can we can we kind of rely on on last year's events or last spring's events to be around the same ballpark time? Yeah, that's typically you know that's typically. Um, and, you know, and truthfully, we're just getting back to events after three years of COVID, two and a half, two and three quarters year of COVID. So, uh, yeah, we're just starting events again. So, hmm. well, with that, I'm hoping the port will be uh, uh, interested in in this this particular one. Because uh, yeah, as a, I, I was going to say the same thing and support you on this. Augie, how, how is the port going to support this event? Yeah. What is it? Um, well, uh, the, the last pandemic, well, what the, our neighborhood council uh, up at uh, Dean Dana Friendship Park and Nature Center has had two events. The last one before the pandemic got on the news, but it's a uh, it's, uh, sustainability nature uh, 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 event. This this last one that was supposed to happen on the uh, on the April before the pandemic and was shut down cold was supposed to be a, a combination of a public safety event and a wild fest, which is the urban wildlife, uh, the wildlife that we all live with, and it's it's also in connection with a global a global um, thing that occurs on iNaturalist, but everybody in the world takes their uh, cameras and, and devices, gets on iNaturalist and captures the wildlife around them. It's supposed to be a species capture. And of course, with uh, the city of Los Angeles and the port of Los Angeles um, being uh, one of the top 30 bio, most bio, biodiverse uh, urban areas in the world, um, we just wanted to promote that and we continue to do that. But um, it's, it, you know, uh, what, what I want was about to say, or what you might have missed is that uh, my, my aim is to have some electric cars and uh, electric bikes at this event for looking at and maybe dry, uh, test, test driving. But um, in the public safety portion, it's everything from emergency preparedness, you know, earthquakes, solar panels, solar lighting, um, you name it, you know, soup so, to so, so basically, Augie, we're, you know, having a big party up, up in our area. We'd love the port to, you know, financially support. And if you can give, su um, suggest other folks we can contact who might be able to, to, you know, help highlight, you know, being environmental and, and supporting wildlife. I, I imagine there's, there's some synergy with some of the things you want to do. So that, yeah. that give you kind of a sense and, and they're in this committee. Yeah, so, perhaps, uh, so financially we do offer grants. Um, you're, you're, if it's going to be next spring, um, our grants, is, it's too late uh, to get grant money from us. 
but uh, because our next grant process will go online around March and it'll be for grants from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024, uh, the period. But typically we, we only give grants, we only give grants to yeah. nonprofits, yeah. Uh, 501c3s, and it has to have a nexus to a port. So it has to be somehow port related. Right. And that's how you, we could financially support you. Perhaps we can, I, but this next, next year we can't. Um, uh, uh, the other, yeah. Uh, how about, about Augie? Um, may I? Yeah. Um, um, pardon me. You know, part of this is about biodiversity. And I know the port does a lot about, you know, trying to mitigate effects of, of like the seagrass, seagrass, sea lions, all this stuff. You're, you're, this would be a great place for you to showcase that. Right. And I mean, you don't have to give us money. You can be there. All right. right. Well, I'd have to ask their environmental uh, group if, they, if they'd if they be interested in doing that. I mean, they're the ones that would be interested. We have some websites and stuff. We have some nice videos. I mean, are you going to have lectures? I mean, is it going to be like a lecture hall or we, are you talking about have, food? We have had lectures. We've had it, uh, uh, but this was again at Friendship Park the last time we did it. Now we're going to host it at Peck Park, which is actually a much larger property. Um, I'm actually going uh, trying to get Vector Control to bring their huge science bus where they have where they have uh, microscopes and things like that. You know, and so so yeah, there uh, the community center can be. Well, you know, you know what we have? We have that big old transporter. Have you ever seen our transporter? Nope. Where, where it's basically a 40, 60 foot uh, container that kids go in and learn all kinds of stuff Perfect. about the port. Perfect. I think, uh, but to get, uh, you know, as soon as you get a date, we need to get, uh, we need to, you know, get that transporter uh, booked and scheduled online because we, we send that thing to a lot of schools and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. That, but that transporter but this would, this would be, be on, a win, on a weekend. So yeah, this yeah. could be a win-win. Yeah, no, yeah, it could be, but I the transporter. Really, I think that's that's your best bet that the board could help you with. I don't think we really need monies, you know, so much as as staff, you know, like in kind experts to maybe do a lecture. Though, though, I find those aren't that well attended. And you know, being a professor, you'd think I promote them, but I, I like like the booth. You know, like what what a wonderful event last weekend, right? There's lots of education. Fun. I brought four college students down there after uh, we had our Ukrainian feeding thing and and they learned a lot. So that's more of what we're thinking, right? Just building excitement and trying to connect the young people in the park with, uh, you know, wildlife of which a lot of our previous conversation was how the port can affect that, right? We want to work on reducing light pollution because that has harmful effects on lots of different animals, birds and turtles and, and uh, you know, so, so different things there where they could be showing. I, I showed earlier all the slides you gave me, uh, you know, helped to get forwarded to me, Augie, on... Uh, you know, the air pollution. If you look over 15 years, some really great stories, right? I know there's a spike. Um, so, so just, you know, that opportunity to showcase what's going on as it affects the environment, because, you know, the, the gases, at least, I know, make it up here. I had some air monitors uh, from the university study up here measuring that. So, so anyway, you, you, know what else is, you know what else is also good with this stuff is uh, you might want to uh, reach out to Cabrillo uh, Beach, uh, the aquarium down there. Yeah, uh, they they do you know they do a wonderful job with all that type of uh, and, all that type of stuff. And that's also. why we're trying. And that's why we're trying to schedule it at a time that doesn't conflict with uh, the Cabrillo uh, Earth Day type event. And the same thing with the Marine Mammal Care Center. They have their seal days and stuff like that. And all, we we would love to have all of those uh, people represented at this event. You know, if if people can't go to all of the little fundraisers and everything else that are that are going on, and because everybody's got something in Earth Day, you know, and pretty much all of April, so it would be great to have a one stop shop and and see everybody and know know all of the great stuff that's here. And but but with that, yeah, I was going to reach out to PBID. If you see uh, the picture behind Jason Herring, we've got we've got a trolley car. <laughs> It's not the P bid uh, red cards, but but we would love to have that for transport. You know, for people who who can't necessarily park up at, at Peck Park. You know, have a transport. Typically, uh, uh, and I, I'm on the P bid board. Typically, the the uh, and it's a legality thing. The P bid uh, trolley has to stay within the P bid district, but they do rent it out 
you know, if you if you guys need it, there there's a way to rent out the PBID trolley. So, yeah, no, um, yeah. I, I know Rika could help me. We I, I was on Team Rika to rent that for my event, and then okay. somebody else wanted to do something else, so we ended up not renting it. But we appreciate the willingness, and it, it wasn't that much money. I, I I don't know the exact budget for this, Wayne, but I you know I know we've saved a lot of money during the pandemic. So if we get that city money back, that, that would be cool. Um, okay, well, I want to keep us moving, seeing we're, we're going the longer side. Uh, yeah. Maybe the good news from a time management is we didn't have any motions, so I can go right through number 10 motions, uh, port-related or uh, environmentally related, but I'm glad Augie's here because um, this, this is what this, this group in particular, and maybe we'll have to change the time or meeting to get the right people there, but we'd really like to have a, a longer discussion probably like a 45 minute discussion, just kind of going over the, the port capital improvement, some of the nuts and bolts, the PAP funding. Um, and, uh, you know, so I want to put that in the radar for next year. We know we've got the holidays coming, so I'm not asking uh, anybody to come on December 20th. I mean, it, um, I'm not even sure what our attendance would be like there, but something to think about for January or February. So let me uh, just uh, give you a real brief PAIP uh, update. Yep. So we had a rather robust uh, conversation on this at our last Port of Harbor Commission meeting. And I believe it's going to come up again in our December uh, meeting, our first first or second uh, meeting in December, where the actual Board of Harbor Commissioners are going to vote on uh, extending or making the PAIP uh, permanent uh, part of our uh, of our budget process here at the Port of Los Angeles. So it, it, it might behoove you to uh, watch the last Board of Arbor Commission meeting. It's about a, it's a good 20 minute conversation about PAIP. And it'll give you a pretty good uh, breakdown of what's, what's going on there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to schedule that for the next uh, president's meeting. So okay. uh, Mike, Mike Alvin will speak on that at our next president's meeting in, uh, in, in pretty good detail. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. So, so the policies might be changing or just they might be made permanent. So the change is that what we've been doing would, would probably become more permanent. Um, well, that's the hope with some of the Harbor commissioners. And once again, um, whatever this commission does, and, you know, we're getting a new mayor and, uh, uh, we're probably, well, you know, in the past, typically we get new Harbor commissioners after we get a new mayor. Yeah. So one thing about this board can't uh, they, you know, the, the other board, uh, a future board can undo uh, things of uh, what this board has done. So, you know, there's all kinds of different, but it all goes through the presentation there. And, um, yeah. you know, so it, it talks about it in great detail. So, so, so maybe February, you know, January, February is a better time to go to well, a little more certainty thing because things. Yeah, might I'm, I'm going to tell you your December 20th meetings. There's not going to be a lot of people. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, I'm That's already, I'm already worried about <laughs> that. And, and I'll kind of yeah. ask folks to see, you know, so I want to cancel it early if we're going to cancel it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, my 67th birthday. Yeah, so there that if happy we don't have Craig, birthday. I mean, I, I don't want to just talk to myself. Craig, so I stopped birthday. having him at 65. Uh, <laughs> well, let's take a note of that, though. Yeah, I'm gonna Wait, well, be, before anything, uh, <laughs> students, thank you for being here. Can you raise your hands one more time just in case there's anybody who was not uh, represented and asked, asked that before? Uh, Rhiannon, and I got you, but yeah, uh, uh, Nicolette. Um, were you, would you raise your hand? I want to make sure I get these hands raised. Okay, yeah, we're, we're towards the end. So if students want credit to show up on the list that we send, probably to Mr. Brunke, put your hand up. And we know there might be people in the public who aren't students, so then keep your mm -hmm. hand up. Nicolette, I, I, I know that I got Sunny and, and Rhiannon. And Nicolette, I'm going to credit you anyway. I, you're probably freaking out and not able to. <laughs> Okay. get your hand up so i'll just throw your name in all uh, right thank you everyone and uh we're, uh, so, I can, right? can i interject um we 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 said we have the other stuff at the harbor um i'm got the name i was looking for it i was looking at it today there there's a harbor commission not a commission but um they give out money um from the port 
and it has meetings and there's projects and they get requests. And I'm trying to remember the name of it because I just saw something on my, uh, I got an email from them and I can't find it. Uh, but the, it's the Harbor Benefits Benefit. Foundation. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, that's, that's an, they, they just uh, finished their cycle actually and, and had announced the awards. Well, they, they, they're going through the second cycle of it was what I saw. Oh, well, I'm not getting that email. I don't know if, if somebody can tell I'll, me if I get out of that list. I, I don't I'll, want to I'll, I'll find it and forward it to you. Thank but, you. I mean, that should be part of our review yeah. process. Thomas, uh, uh, Mr. Havenick, I believe, is, is part of that. Uh, uh, it has a lot of information on that. So... Richard, Nick, Jamie Wilson, Richard. those were the names I recognized. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, and then, you know, we're towards the end, but we haven't seen Jason in a, in a while. Uh, item 12 is just any parties or projects we haven't already discussed or put in my action items. Because the next thing on the agenda is adjourning. So, but I don't want to, I don't want to rush it if people have some ideas or things they want, want us to work on or we, we've got. Oh, okay. Actually, those hands are up for students, I think, right? You don't want to speak. Um, does uh, Ariana want to speak? No. <laughs> Athena, do you want to speak? <laughs> or Trenda? Okay, if you keep it up, I'm going to allow you to talk. Did you oh, Athena, to I think Athena does want to speak. She's still got her hand up. This is great. Athena? Hi. Yeah. Did, Hi. Did you... Oh, sorry. I didn't realize my hand was still up. Okay, okay. I was confused why everyone was saying my name, my bad. No, I, I want to make sure the public gets to speak. This is, you know, for, for the public benefit. Yes, so. I agree. The public is very important. So, okay, well, th thank you. Um, any of the uh, committee members, ideas, things to add to the agenda? Otherwise, we've got folks doing research on uh, light pollution was the trickier one. Some really great things I learned about noise pollution. I love the idea of the container stacking. Um, you know, nothing on sailboats or, you know, sometimes have concerns, Jason, anything? I don't know if you guys know about the Friends of Peck Park that uh, the group has been getting together. Yeah, they, the meeting was supposed to happen tonight. They canceled yeah. it. But tomorrow, There's yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. 9, 9 a.m. Yep. is going to be a walk, a uh, nature walk. And uh, that, that will be a, a regular monthly thing. But to assess the park, uh, again, that's yeah about the plantings and everything. And uh, so, and yeah, okay, so that's tomorrow for people listening. You could go to that at, at uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m., but students will be in school, I think. So, yeah, yeah. wasn't there something at 6 p.m. too? Uh, that, that meeting was supposed to happen today. Oh, that that was the meeting today. Okay, that, yeah, that, was that, that interfered here. Okay, so so that's good. Okay, well, then I won't keep us any longer. Thank you so much for everyone's patience. Um, with me in this process and uh, please pre bring your good ideas and uh, yourself to these meetings. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting adjourned, but I have a, well, I guess I could have it on the record. Um, just a general sense of many members, should we keep the December 20th meeting? I'll, I'll talk to you if you're feeling alone. <laughs> Are you celebrating that thing you don't celebrate, Craig? <laughs> Somebody does. <laughs> they keep. I just say curl up into the thing and say, "Why am I so old?" So <laughs> look at my calendar. I I think I'm around, but uh, you know. So okay, well, uh, I'll be around. Uh, what I'll do when I send you know the call for agenda topics, just be honest. If you're not showing up, I don't want to have a meeting. Have people dial in to have two people look at each other. So well, we have the CIS, the wildlife thing. That the let's let's babysit all of that. It may be you know, and uh, maybe I'll have that traffic one ready to go. I, I'm I, I'm ready to work. So if people want to show up, I'd love to see us. That make would be great. Work. Start here with a lot of a comment. It is December. People, you know, it's I for some reason people think we always have to have a meeting, and I don't, you know, if we miss a meeting, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it, it, if it doesn't seem like it's going to be productive, well, or a lot, a lot of people are going to show up. Well, well, the the one thing that I've noticed about the port. 
is that all of the really interesting stuff gets dumped in December. So it's like those 30 day common things. Yeah, no, I, I, I am. Um, Pat, Pat may have mentioned that. Gotta keep I'll, those be, eyes. I'll be on the gotta look, lookout for that. Moments. All right, so, so I'm not planning to cancel it, uh, but you know, if it's just Jason there to spend time with me, and I mean, it'll, it'll be a very short meeting, Jason, but thank you for the offer. All right, I call this meeting adjourned, so I'll stop recording.